Our next story is on a subject that scares many, mental illness, because there's so much we don't understand. In any given year, 5% of Americans have serious mental health problems. Many cases, mood disorders, PTSD, addiction, according to a government study, go untreated. But tonight, Dr. Sanjay Gupta is going to show you a new kind of surgery that literally changes the way our brains work. For as long as Edie Guyton can remember, she could not get the sad thoughts out of her head. I mean, my mother used to say to me, smile, Edie, why don't you smile? And I would, you know, give a something like that maybe, or just think, what is there to smile about? At 19, her blank face reflected what would later be diagnosed as severe depression. That expression is the best I could, I could do. What's it like to look at it now? I feel sorry for her. <laughs> um, you know, I just, I feel bad for her that she couldn't smile, that she couldn't talk to people about, you know, what, what is going on with her that would lead her to cut her wrist several months later. It was her sophomore year. Academic and social pressures were the trigger. And one night, for reasons that are inexplicable to me, even now, got up and started playing with a razor and you cut your wrists mm -hmm. you cut both your wrists yeah mm -hmm. she went into counseling but it didn't help over the next 40 years she tried everything else including psychiatric drugs and electroconvulsive shock therapy and then there was a few years that i i think i felt pretty good but then i went back down and i went back down very deep there were two more suicide attempts before she conquered the demon. What finally worked? Well, if you could look inside Edie Guyton's head today, this is what you'd see. I don't think about it, but I have electrodes in my brain. <laughs> two electrodes, the thickness of angel hair pasta, powered by a battery pack under her collarbone. And the wire goes up here and then into my, you know, into my brain. <laughs> Specifically to a part of the brain known as Area 25. It's an experimental treatment. So what are we looking at here? Pioneered by neurologist Dr. Helen Mayberg. The, the X is where we're stimulating. Since the mid-1990s, Mayberg has been using high-tech imaging to study the brain circuits that control our moods. She figured out that Area 25 is a junction box in the center of it all. Okay, here we go, Charlie. Hi. Mayberg's research also showed that in depressed patients, Area 25 is relatively overactive. Here, again, you can see Area 25, except now it's red as opposed to blue, because this is an increase. She theorized that in patients like Edie Guyton, who did not respond to conventional treatments, Area 25 was somehow stuck in overdrive. It just was a matter of following the experimental trail. Okay. The trail okay. led to the operating room. I have one. And a procedure known as deep brain stimulation, DBS. Here at Emory, where I'm on staff, my colleagues have been using deep brain stimulation for more than 15 years to treat movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease. In that case, they're targeting the brain's motor system. But Dr. Mayberg wanted to use DBS to target Area 25 for patients with severe depression. So beginning in 2003, working with a brain surgeon in Toronto, she began testing it on six patients. It had never been done before. We had patients who were profoundly without any options and suffering, and we had a hypothesis. What did you worry about most in terms of potential side effects from actually stimulating 25? Because of its vital position, its junction box location, 
for all we knew, we were going to activate it and actually make people feel worse. Instead, Mayberg saw two-thirds of the patients get significantly better. She has since reported similar results for 31 others. And we not only get them better, but with continued stimulation with this device, they stay well. People who had lived in a block of emotional ice, people like Edie, who had lived that way for years. It's not that you won't be happy or that you aren't happy, it's you can't be happy. Not even when her grandniece, Susan, was born. And somebody handed her to me and I held her, but I didn't even put her face to mine. I just held her, but I was going through the motions and I felt really nothing. 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 On the day of surgery, Edie's head was mounted in a rigid frame. The sound of the drill, the feeling of it, and my teeth are going like this. I think it hit home to me that you're having brain surgery. Somebody is going into your brain. Imagine living in a hole so dark you cannot see, so deep you cannot escape. That's severe depression. Now doctors are experimenting with a cutting-edge treatment, battery-powered brains. How does it work? Can it cure depression? Dr. Gupta continues his investigation. In an operating room at Emory University in Atlanta. Right now we're just gonna anchor this one in place. These doctors are trying to use deep brain stimulation to turn off severe depression. Figuring out uh, where the blood vessels are and obviously choosing the target. Is that right? The target is area 25 a junction box for brain circuits that control our moods. Our patients are miserable. It's, it's beyond sadness. Um, they spend most of their day just sitting there, often thinking, you know, why can't I just die? Um, 7.4. At first, patients are lightly sedated as Dr. Robert Gross drills two holes. With an instrument to guide him, he then inserts the electrodes. To make sure the electrodes are in the right spot, we can actually listen for neurons firing in the brain. The gray matter sounds like this. The white matter is silent. And that's where they want the electrodes, the white matter just below area 25. We just confirmed that all the electrodes are basically in the right place. It was a procedure, just like this, done on Edie Guyton. What were the risks? What did they tell you? brain damage, um, infection, death. Did you have second thoughts about doing this? No. It was that bad? It was that bad. Deep brain stimulation would change her life. Are we, is the contract on? Contract's on. You could see it happen when she was wide awake in the operating room with doctors Paul Holzheimer and Helen Maber. Are you okay, Edie? Yeah. Okay. As a benchmark, they asked Edie to rate her feelings on a scale of 1 to 10, starting with dread. My sense of dread is getting worse. Your sense of dread is getting worse. Rate it. Okay. Two minutes later, they turned on one of the four contacts. How does it feel right now? Is it still hot? No, it's much worse. It's What's the dread right now? A drop from 8 to 3. But doctors would soon get an even better result. I feel like they're going to make some changes. Remember, before the surgery, Edie could not connect emotionally with her grandniece, Susan. Then, they turned on contact number two. Just let me know if anything changes. Just give a shout. Okay. Um, I just almost smiled. You just almost smiled? <laughs> yeah. Look, describe that for us, would you please? I didn't smile. It brings tears to your eyes to see somebody that is in such pain, and then that goes away. When you say you almost smiled, would you, would, did something strike you as funny, or is it just sort of spontaneous? It was, well, I it actually yeah, I was thinking of playing with um, Susan. I started thinking about Susan, little Susan, and I thought I was holding, you know, she was 
I was holding her with her face to me, right there in the middle of brain surgery. I felt feelings that I thought were gone. What is that like, just to think that a, a machine and electricity could transform your emotions like that? It felt fantastic. I didn't care what was doing it. <laughs> it, just, it just felt great. Actually, spoon it in there. It's been five years. Edie is one of Dr. Mayberg's most dramatic success stories. Yeah, pretty good, huh? I don't feel good all the time. But this gives me the capacity that if I can, if there is joy in my life, I have the capacity to feel it. But what exactly is going on? What is DBS doing to the brain circuits? What do we and don't we know about why this works? Well, to be brutally honest, we have no idea how this works. And if Area 25 is so important, why doesn't everyone get better? Maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe it's not in the right place. Maybe they're not the right patient. That means we've got to understand the biology better. Mayberg's research is part of this quiet revolution in medicine. In addition to depression, scientists are looking at DBS targets for obsessive compulsive disorder, epilepsy, Tourette syndrome, and Alzheimer's. In the meantime, Edie Guyton is thankful for her new life. With the battery pack delivering about one one thousandth of the power that a flashlight bulb uses. Do you feel any electricity or anything? I don't feel anything in my head at all. Did you go off medication when you were pregnant? She's active with a mental health advocacy and support group. And she recently traveled to Italy with old friends from college. And that smile was real. I was OK. <laughs> it's only been an issue once. At the airport, I just go and I say, and they say pacemaker, and I say yes. And one time I said, actually, it's brain electrodes, and I never did that again. The woman was patting me down like she was afraid I would explode. Boy, you gotta love airport security. A couple of final points. Dr. Mayberg and another doctor hold the patent on the procedure. This is still experimental, and FDA approval to make it widely available is at least several years away. Well, that's it for tonight's show. I'm Drew Griffin. And I'm Randy Kay. Thanks for joining us.